Hello and welcome again to the Real Estate Junkies. Today, a very special show. We all have property or we lease it or we rent it or we own it. And there is boundaries between property lines. And those always seem to be not where they're supposed to be. So today in the studio with me, Rami <laughs> Rahmanian, a friend, a realtor, a <laughs> attorney. An attorney, right. I don't need a realtor for the show. I'm enough. <laughs> we got an attorney to help enough us with these, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the boundary issues. So, Rami, you have probably had a whole lot of cases of people suing people or trying to get their boundaries in place. Right. You know, Nick, the most common type of problem is when you have two neighbors uh, and one of them builds a fence and the fence takes up a little portion of the other neighbor's property. Isn't that like always? <laughs> it's always, right? It's either a fence or a driveway or something. Um, the more extreme example that, that I can remember from one of my clients was I had a client who owned property on the top of a hill mm -hmm. and she had neighbors below her and the boundary line was right in the middle of the hill. So my client decided she wanted to uh, set up a garden. So she built a garden and she used it for, for many, many years. Well, the neighbors below her uh, got suspicious one day that maybe she was encroaching on their property. So they had a survey done, and they saw, sure enough, a portion of her garden uh, overlapped onto their side. And this is after 10 years of her having this garden. And so they asked Keyword. her... Keyword. Keyword. We'll, encroachment? 10 years. All encroachment? Right. Well, well, we'll get to that, why that's important later. Uh, they asked her to remove her garden, which she refused. Uh, long story short, they sued her, and in the end, uh, she was able to keep her garden, and the court granted her what's called an easement. Okay. Okay? Now, if you're not familiar with it, an easement is not an ownership interest. She didn't own a portion of her neighbor's property. An easement is a legal right to use the property of another. Okay. So, in this particular case, the property, the adjacent property, the below property, was encroached by her activity of expanding the garden. Right. And due to the fact that she has used that piece of land for a, a period certain of time. amount of time, mm -hmm. which is? Five years. Five years. Over five years. Over, over five years. She won the right to use that piece of property from now on. Right. Okay. Now, what arose as a result of her using the property is what's called a prescriptive easement. Okay. Okay. Well, now, obviously, it's different easements then, right? There are many different types of easements. You have uh, an express easement, which is when two landowners agree, they come to an agreement in writing. Okay. Hey, I need to use a part of your driveway to get to my house. Okay, sure. Pay me a little something. We'll, we'll put it in writing. Okay. Uh, you have implied easements. You have easements by necessity. So if you have one property owner who's landlocked, who has no way of getting to a public road, uh, well, they can use the property of another and use their road to get to where they need to go because they have no other way of and accessing that's their most property. most frequently in the city. Right, yeah. right. Now, in this case, in the case of my client, the law says when you use the property of another in a particular way, you don't use it, you use it without their consent. Mm -hmm. You use it in a way where they should reasonably know if they know their boundaries, that you're on a piece of their property, right. and you use it uninterruptedly for five years, then uh, the court, you know, if this comes to that, can rule that you permanently have a legal right to use that property okay. under a prescriptive easement. So what, what, what are maybe ways around the easement that could uh, save the owner's, you know, the, the, let's say the infringed owner's interest? Well, there's actually one very easy way around this particular problem. And the simple way is to go up to that owner and say, I give you permission to use my property. Permission. Better yet, you post a sign Great. that says, you can have your garden here with my permission as the landowner. Okay. What that does is that creates what's called a license. Okay. Okay? You're granting a license. Do you have your to neighbor. notarize that or do anything with that license? Or? No, a license doesn't need to be in writing as long as it's posted conspicuously. Okay. Right? It's better always to have something in writing, but if you're not able to do that, if, uh, if they're not willing to sign anything, then you can post a sign either at the entrance of the land or every 200 feet along the boundary really? that says you are granted a license to use this property. 
Can it um, be handwritten or you have to print it? Uh, it can be handwritten. <laughs> okay. In fact, if you live uh, you know, in the city over yeah. here in Monrovia, as you're walking through Old Town, you'll see there's lots of alleyways between buildings. Yes. Next time you walk through one of those alleyways, pay careful attention to the walls. You might notice some plaques okay. that are put into the wall that says, this alleyway is, uh, is being used with the permission of these property owners. What they're doing is creating a license. So they can revoke that at any time. Yeah. They, can, they can come back 10 years later and say, I revoke my license, I revoke my permission, you're not able to use this anymore. And there's no danger of creating a prescriptive easement by accident. So you're saying that some of those alleys we're kind of used to walking through in downtown Monrovia? Right. With the, that signage are actually pieces of somebody's property, left or right, mm -hmm. that have been just given right to use for until revoked. Right. Now, if they didn't have those plaques there, yeah. and an easement was created, they wouldn't be able to now build on those portions. They'd have to leave those alleyways there permanently for people to use because okay. there's an easement there. Okay, so one of the ways to uh, creatively go around an easement, uh, any of the four that you mentioned, is just by giving a permit or a license. Just by giving a permit or a license. In some cases, like in the case of, of my client, um, the property that she was infringing upon wasn't really buildable. Okay. So one solution was they could have come to an agreement. Right, right, right. The neighbor below could have said, fine, you can use the garden. I know an easement is there already. Why don't we just make it official? Why don't you compensate me um, for using it? And, and I'll sign this thing. Now, keep in mind, an easement is not an ownership interest. Right, right. You of don't course. own the property. You just have the right to use it. But you just opened another can of worms there. Another can of worms, as a matter of fact, I would think it's a benefit. Why don't you pay me for using it? So you can actually charge that other owner to use that piece of property with the permit which you can revoke right account. yeah you can you can charge like a, somebody like a lease yeah you can charge somebody for a license you can okay. say i license you to use this pay me something and then you know you it, it really depends on what you agree to right. now if this goes to court right if you're in a, if you have an easement problem yeah. the court might uh, create something called an equitable easement Right? So the court might look at the relative hardships, mm -hmm. you know, what's the hardship created if I take away the easement versus the hardship created if I let them continue to use it. And based on that, they might allow an easement to exist, and they might, but they might order the person using the property to pay the landowner. Right. So there's two uh, things that just popped up now. One is when, when this license or easement is created and you are maybe charging uh, a fee for that, you're looking at the typical property owner, Monrovia, Arcadia, doesn't matter, and there's walls. You, you, you have parcels and the walls between the parcels, and assuming that you find out that that wall is not where it's supposed to be, uh, you can definitely, without, you can, you can make them move the wall if necessary, but you can also say, you know, we can leave the wall here, but if you want to leave the wall, you've got to pay me that much for that easement. No, no, for the easement, for the permit to use that piece of land. Right. You can do any number of things. You can either grant an easement mm -hmm. and, or you can grant a license. Or in some cases, if it's, uh, if it's an unused piece of property, a landowner might sell it. They might sell yeah. a portion of it. They might try to divide it if that's allowable. Yeah. Um, the key is to find out where those boundaries exist. Yep. And the way you do that is by getting what's called a survey. Of course. Okay. Uh, every property, of course, has an address. But in addition to that, every property has what's called a legal description. It's written in the recorder's office, and there's a map that's followed, and uh, there's text on your deed that tells you exactly where those boundaries are. Yeah. What you can do is hire a company to do a survey. They'll follow that map and follow those boundaries and tell you exactly where your property lines are, so you'll know if you have an easement problem or not. Yeah, I actually uh, used it myself the other day. Somebody smacked into my wall with a car, damaged oh, the wall. I'm sorry we, to hear that. No, it was good because actually when we did the easement, <laughs> the wall was on the city property line. Oh, nice. So it was not my wall. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> Got it repaired. That, that, that's great. For, I mean, we have a great relationship with the city, so they were happy to repair it. But good, good. we did the easement and found out that the wall was... Uh, not the easement, uh, the survey. survey, found out that the wall, my wall, was actually not on my parcel for that particular purpose. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, wise so property owner. The, the, the last thing here that we can touch on is, of course, you have these easements or permits and so on, and now you're at the point where you want to sell your property. How does that affect the sale of your property, and how is it resolved or taken into account during the process? Sure. Well, easements do run with the land, okay, meaning... Uh, if an easement was created, it's something that follows the property, 
not the property owners. Right. Okay? So normally the way you uh, account for that is you add a separate line to the deed that makes it clear that there's an easement on this property and that's recorded. So every subsequent property owner knows that this easement exists and, and they have would to respect the permits, it. And uh, how permits or licenses affect the new owner of the property and the relationship between the licensee? That's a good question, Nick. <laughs> um, it really depends on what you negotiate. Yeah, okay. You know? Uh, if, if, uh, if it's a license that you're granting specifically to an individual, then I believe, I don't know, 100%, but I believe that the license would follow the individual. So once they sold the property, the license would be extinguished. Okay. But well, don't, good. don't I got, pull got me on you that. Curveball you threw here. me a oh, curveball. Right. Yeah. The key here is get help. Seek, seek a counsel from somebody, from an attorney who's qualified who can advise you on these things. If they that's definitely th the key and that's why we brought Rami on the show because attorney is good for anything that we don't want to deal with. I'm not an attorney. <laughs> who's attorney here? That's a good way of putting hey! it. Attorneys are good for things you don't want to deal with, folks. That's Absolutely. Good, right? So you heard it only here on Real Estate Junkies and we'll see you next time.